Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to go ahead and cover a few more questions off of the arithmetic reasoning portion of the ASVAB. So let's go ahead and dive right in and let's see what we can learn. Today we're looking at number six. It says the price of daily admission at a music park is $36. The park sells an unlimited season pass for $240. How many trips would you need to make with the season ticket in order to cost less than paying the daily admission rate? So here's the deal. We are seeing like, hey, Every time I go to this amusement park, I'm going to be paying $36, all right? At what point is it going to be larger than $240 because that's the unlimited pass price? So what I could do here is take $240 and divide it by $36. But if you're like, I don't like doing division in my head like that, that's a lot because there's no calculator here. Let's just start plugging in these answers and see what we get. So if I do $36, let us say I go to the park six times. That means I'm multiplying by 6 because we're doing 36 plus itself 6 times, all right? So if that's the case, 6 times 6 is 36. Carry the 3 up there. 6 times 3 is just going to be 18, then 19, 20, 21. So we got 216. That is not at 240, so I have not made it to that threshold yet. Let's go ahead and move on to the 7. Two ways we could do this. I could just do a full fresh one, 36 times 7. Or if I wanted, I could just take the 216 and add another 36 to it, because that would be like multiplying by 7. Let's just go ahead and add 6 plus 6 is going to give me 12. Carry the 1. We got 1 plus a 3 would be 4, plus one more is 5. And then we can carry down that 2. So if we go up to 7, we're actually now at 252 which is indeed larger than 240. So game seven is going to be where we cross that threshold. So what makes number seven hard? It says a plumber needs four lengths of pipe, each three feet six inches long. Pipes are sold by the foot. How many feet does he need to buy? So here's the deal. first one. You are cooked with this question if you don't know how many inches are in a foot. And if you didn't know that, there are 12 inches per foot. So that means that this six inch is really half of a foot. All right. So when we know that now we're looking at four of these. Okay. Well, four times three is going to give me 12. And then I also have four halves. So that's going to be plus another two because half plus half is going to give me one. And then the other half plus half of the four is going to give me another one. So now we have 12 plus two, and that's going to end up giving me a total of 14. So when we're converting here, what we're looking at now is this six and a half feet when multiplied by four is going to give me 14 feet total. So our final answer here is C. So this question seems really confusing at first, but really not too bad at all. It says the product of two consecutive odd numbers is 399. What are the numbers? Well, even from just looking at the answers, you should be able to figure this out. But if not, let's go ahead and take a look. First off, two consecutive odd numbers. What does that mean? It means one after the other. So like if I'm looking at three, the consecutive number to that would be five because that's the next odd number. All right. So if you look at these, all of our options do indeed give you two numbers that are both odd and one right after the other. All right. So the next thing you need to know is product. Keep in mind, product always means when you multiply them, what is the answer? So you need to know that as well. So now when I go looking through here, I'm not even going to multiply all of these together. Here's what I'm going to do. This last number is a 9. When I'm multiplying these, the only thing that makes a difference for that last number is the last number of these two being multiplied together and seeing what it gives you. So for example, 7 times 9 gives me 63. That last number is a 3 and does not match with that 9, so it would be out. Now, with this process, you can go through this real fast because, look, 7 times 5, no, that's 35, ending in a 5. 3 times 1 is going to end in a 3. 1 times 9 is going to end in a 9. And then 9 times 7, we already saw, ends in 3. So the only one that ended in a 9 is going to be option B. So I bet you if you multiply those all the way through, you're going to end up with that 399. So number nine says a personal trainer earns 65% commissions on her training sales. If she sells $530 worth of training, how much commission does she make? So the way you would do this long way is you would take 530 and multiply it by 0.65 and that will give you your answer. Now, although that is one way, I'm going to do this this time using some shortcuts here with percents and just like creative, like, you know, rounding things like that. Not even rounding, like just estimating. So... 50%, I'm going to break this down into 50% plus 10% plus 
plus 5%, and you'll see why. So 50% means half of this guy. All right, so what is half of 530? Well, I know half of 500 is 250, and half of 30 is 15. So 250 plus 15 is going to end up giving me 265. Then we have 10%. Well, 10%, you just move the decimal place over one. So that's going to be 53. And 5% is just half of that. So half of 50 is 25, and half of that would be one and a half. So 25 plus one and a half would be 26 and 50 cents. So now we know this guy's out because of the 45 cent. Now we just need to add these up and we'll have our final answer. So 265 plus 53 plus 2650. So first off, let's just start all the way over on the one side and see what we can eliminate and go with. So five plus the three is going to give me eight plus another six is going to end up giving me four for the end. All right. And then we have that one carried over because it's going to be 14. And looking at that, that cancels this guy out. So now we're left with these two. And I'm no way going to get to 800 because we have 200 here and we're not even adding another 100. So that means our answer is C. Even if there wasn't a typo in question 10, I think you would still get it wrong. Let's talk about it. It says that the rectangle, so we got a rectangle. It says that it is one inch longer than it is wide. So the width, we'll call it X, means that that's going to be one inch shorter than the length. So that will be our X plus one. All right. Now from here, it says that the diameter is five inches. There's no such thing as a diameter in a rectangle. That's in a circle. That's the typo right there. It should be a diagonal. And that's going to be five. What's the width of this rectangle? Well, if you didn't realize what kind of question this is, this is actually a Pythagorean theorem question where we know that it's a right angle, so a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Let's fill that in. x squared is this side, plus b squared, which is this guy, x plus 1 all squared, is going to be equal to 5 squared, our diagonal. So we got here, I'm going to expand this one right here. So we have x squared plus... So really, this is going to be two of these side by side being multiplied. So x times x is going to give me x squared. Then we have x times this one, which is going to give us an x, and 1 times this x, which is going to give us another x. So that's actually plus 2x's. And then we have 1 times 1, which is just going to be plus 1. And that's still going to be equal to 5 squared, which is 25. Let's combine like terms to make this look a little nicer. We have x and x squared is going to give us 2x squared. And we have that plus 2x still plus one, and that's all going to be equal to that 25. So from here, we now have to solve for what it is. Quite frankly, I think it's going to be fastest to just plug this in. So let's take a look here. Let's go ahead and start with the, I don't know, three. So three squared is nine. Nine times two is 18 plus nine times two, or sorry, three. Three is what we're plugging in. Three times two is six plus one. Does that give me 25? Um, 18 plus 6 is going to give me 24 plus 1. <laughs> Great. Good. Because I'm out of time for this. And B, 3 inches is going to be the answer. But I really do think it is your best choice here to go ahead and try plugging these in. Because otherwise, you would have to do like a factoring out here, solving, and all that jazz. So I would just go ahead and stick with this. B, final answer, 3. So yesterday, we solved this question up here. After realizing they had a typo right here for diagonal, diameter, it should really be diagonal here. Um, and we, right off the bat, like wrote this picture out where we said, okay, we have one side that's x. We have an x plus one side over here. And then we have a 5 over here. Now, I do want to say there is another option. Still using this idea of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's talk about what that second way of doing this would be. Here, we plugged in our x's and kind of solved using algebra and ended up plugging in at the last minute to get 3. But what if, from the very start, you tried plugging in to get your answer here? So let's look at our options over here, and I'm going to move it a little bit this way. If I started off by saying x was 2, then that means that it would be 2 squared, and we know this one's plus 1, so plus 3 squared would be equal to 5 squared. Well, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 
and 5 squared is 25. So that means the 2 doesn't work. But notice how we're able to plug in really early on right here to try to try that out instead of doing all of this stuff down here. So let's go move to the next one. We would say, okay, for that one, it's 3 squared plus, and then the 3 plus 1 is going to give me 4 squared, and is that equal to 5 squared? Well, 3 squared is 9, plus 4 squared is 16 is equal to 25. 9 plus 16 is 25, and we'd be able to stop right there and have our final answer of B. This does seem like a little bit faster of an approach in this situation instead of trying to do all of this stuff down here. Um, so I just wanted to make sure we had a chance to go back and look at that as well. Hey guys, that's all we're going to cover for today. But remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ASVAB.